Let's lift our hands to the Most High God and just bless His holy name. Give Him glory for all He's done for you since the beginning of the year. Praise Him. Like someone who has the assurance that we will see the new year. Praise Him. Magnify His holy name. Worship Him. Bless the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Praise Him. It's worthy to be praised. He deserves to be praised. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. Bless His holy name. Thank you, Father. Worthy to be praised, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You're worthy to be praised, you're worthy to be adored, you're worthy to be magnified. There's no one like you. Blessed be your holy name. What a good God you are. What a glorious God. Loving. Faithful. Dependable. More than able. We worship you, we adore you, we give you all glory, all honor, all adoration. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you so, 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 so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. I want you to lift up your voices for all fathers, current and potential, and just say, Father, bless all fathers and enlarge their coast. Let's talk to the Almighty God. Father, bless all fathers. Current fathers, potential fathers, grandfathers. Bless all fathers, O Lord. Fathers biological, fathers spiritual. Bless them, Lord. Enlarge their course. Let him be well with all fathers, all of them, young and old. Father, bless all our fathers. Fathers in the Lord, bless them. Our logical fathers, bless them. Fathers to be, bless them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. It doesn't matter what some people may say. Without mothers, there can be no fathers. So let's lift our voices to the Almighty God and say, Father, bless all mothers. Enlarge their hosts. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Father, bless all mothers. Enlarge their hosts. Be with them, my Father and my God. And just bless them. Bless them mightily. Bless every one of them. Bless all mothers, Lord. Bless all mothers.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Bless all mothers. May your name be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, you have kept me thus far. Let me see the new year. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. You have kept me thus far. It's your power that kept me thus far. Please, Almighty God, let me see the new year. Let me see the new year. In good health, in strength, in joy, in victory, in anointing. Father, let me see the new year. Let me even be better off in the new year than in the old. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Amen. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, Jesus. We give you all the glory. of days we give you all the glory the one who is the beginning as well as the ending we give you all the glory thank you for January thank you for February thank you for March thank you for April thank you for May thank you for June thank you for July Thank you for August. Thank you for September. Thank you for October. Thank you for November. And we thank you in advance even for December. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Father, today we commit all fathers into your hands. Those who are fathers already and those who will be fathers. Every one of them, bless them. Amen. Anoint them for success. Amen. Enlarge their coast. Amen. Don't let them bury their children. Amen. Move them from glory to glory. Amen. In your own miraculous way, let them break forth. And Father, bless all mothers also. Amen. Prosper them. Amen. Strengthen them. Amen. Support them. Amen. Let them be good mothers. Amen. And Father, you are the one who brought us thus far. This year is going to an end. And when the year is drawing to an end, all manners of things begin to happen. 
Father, let only good things happen to us. Let us see the new year in good health, in joy, in prosperity, in victory. Let the coming year be better than this one. And Father, we commit all your children who have been faithful in the payment of their tithes and the giving of their offerings to you. Father, embarrass them with your blessings. Open the windows of heaven. Bless them beyond measure. Let it be well with them. And all those who have been honoring you, Father, honor them. Lord, I pray that every day of this month, we bring miracles to your children. Thank you once again, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, shake hands with one or two people and say, Good morning, God will enlarge your coast. And then you may please be seated. Genesis 26, from verse 12 to 14. Genesis 26, 12 to 14. While you are opening your Bibles, it's time for you to begin to advertise the Congress. Congress is coming now. Less than one month from now on, we'll have the Congress. It's going to be the biggest, the best, the most miraculous that we have seen thus far. It's a, con it's a kind of Congress we mustn't miss a single day. It's going to be very, very powerful. Genesis 26, 12 to 14. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The Lord will bless somebody here today. And the man waxed great. Somebody will wax great. And went forward. Somebody's going to go forward. And grew. Somebody will grow today until he became very great. Uh, someone is going to be very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants. I mean, this man was so great, he was storing servants. And the Philistines envied him. I pray in the name that's above every other name that before you die, you become the envy of a nation. This morning we've been asked to speak on breaking forth. The word break, tiny as it is, is a very powerful word particularly when you join it to other tiny words. For example, break in, break out, break up, break down, etc., etc. The moment you join in, to break. You are breaking, and you know what that means. Burglary. 
In Luke 11, verse 21 to 22, Luke 11, 21 to 22, the Bible says, if, if a strong man armed keeps his house, all his goods are safe, until a burglar comes, until somebody stronger than him comes, and then dispossess him by overcoming him, and looting everything he has. Fortunately for us, we have the strongest of all men on our side. Romans 8.31 Romans 8.31 It says, if God be for us, who can be against us? So we don't need to be afraid of a breaking. So I can boldly decree that for the rest of your life you won't suffer burglary. And then there is breakout. Breakout basically is talking about prisoners escaping. Very terrible situation. Act 16, 25 to 28. Act 16, 25 to 28 says us what happened when Paul and Silas praised God in prison and the prison doors were open and every man's yoke was, was loosed. The jailer, when he woke up and discovered that the prison doors were open, he thought there had been a breakout. He was going to kill himself. Because it's a terrible thing for you to be in charge of a prison and there's a breakout there. In our own case, we are prisoners of Jesus Christ and we have no intention of breaking out. Uh, the book of Philemon, the only chapter, verse 1, Paul said, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. We are prisoners by choice. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. Jesus Christ said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, Take my yoke upon you. So we took the yoke on us. We decided to be prisoners of Jesus Christ by choice so that we can have rest for our souls. So we have no intention of breaking out at all. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15. Second Corinthians 12, verse 15 says, We will not only spend, we will gladly spend and be spent for Jesus Christ. If we turn break out the other way, it becomes outbreak. And you know what that one means? It means uh, an epidemic. When you talk of an outbreak of Ebola, outbreak of Lassa fever, you're talking about something evil. Because we have chosen to be prisoners of Jesus Christ by choice, I can guarantee you no outbreak is ever going to come near you. Because I remember very well it was, we were, were getting ready for our convention when there was this outbreak of Ebola along the West Coast. And uh, several government institutions approached us saying, cancel the convention. Because people are coming from the West Coast. They, we don't want them to bring Ebola into Nigeria because we know those who are coming to your camp will be many and if they catch it in your camp then Nigeria is finished. I smiled. I told them there will be no outbreak. Not in our camp. I said if, if this thing had ever entered Nigeria it will go. Because every plant my father did not plant shall be rooted up. I'm decreeing again. 
concerning every one of you, no outbreak will ever affect you. And then there is break up. To break up, you know what that one means, is to separate. You know, two people were in courtship and they say, what's happening? Oh, they broke up. Demas was a co-laborer with Paul the Apostle. Philippians, uh, sorry, Philemon, the only chapter, verse 24. Paul called Demas my fellow laborer. He was an assistant apostle. But in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, 2 Timothy 4, verse 10, he broke up with Paul. He said, Demas had forsaken me, having loved the present world. But in, in our own case, there's no going to be any breakup between us and Jesus. Because according to Romans chapter 8, verse 35, Romans 8, 35, he said, who is going to separate us from Jesus? What is, what is it? What's going to happen? We already got Jesus, and we are going to remain steadfast in the end. Do I hear amen to that? Remember when I got born again, when I was a very young Christian, and, and, and I was so glad that at long last I found Jesus. And I was running up and down, telling everybody about Jesus Christ, do everything I could do to advertise him. Some people say, oh, that's how they always start. They always start hot. Don't worry, it will soon cool down. I told them I will never cool down. I'm going to get hotter and hotter till I see Jesus Christ. And I thank God that after more than 40 years, I am not cool yet. And I believe there's someone here who will get hotter and hotter for Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. And then there is breakdown. You know what that one means? To break down means to be grounded. When you say your, your vehicle uh, broke down, that means you are grounded. When we hear that somebody uh, broke down in sickness, confined to bed, means it's grounded. You see example in Samson, Judges chapter 16, verse 18 to 21. Judges 16, 18 to 21. The mighty man who used to scatter enemies like uh, nobody's business broke down because his connection to God was removed. And so the enemy came, they plucked out his eyes, they bound him, they took him to prison. He had a breakdown. But in your case, and in my case, in the mighty name of Jesus, because we are going to remain forever attached to God, we will never have a breakdown. Because in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, Isaiah 40, verse 31, the Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Our strength will be constantly renewed. We will never have a breakdown. Physically, we won't break down. Mentally, we will not break down. Spiritually, we will not break down. And then there are, are two other words that you can get, compound words, you can get from break, that are good words. One is breakthrough. To break through means, hey, success at last. And before the new year, somebody will sing success at last. In Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 7, Luke 5, verse 1 to 7, Peter fished all night 
and failed. Then Jesus stepped into his boat. He threw one net and caught so much fish that two boats were beginning to sink. Breakthrough at last. In Genesis 26, verse 22, Genesis 26, verse 22, the Bible tells us that after Isaac had been digging wells upon wells upon wells, he would dig and somebody would take it away. This time he dug away and nobody struggled with him. So it's a breakthrough at last. In the name of the one who chose me, I decree into the lives of every one of you, breakthrough at last. May the biggest word that is a compound word, joy to break, is break forth. To break forth means to enlarge, to enlarge steadily, just keep on enlarging, to enlarge progressively getting larger and larger and to enlarge massively. We don't talk about break forth unless it becomes massive, the enlargement. That is the text we read this month, Genesis 26, from verse 12 to 14. It talks about a man who began sowing. Suddenly, it just occurred to him, there is a law of harvest. If I sow, I will reap. So he sowed. The first year, he had a hundredfold returns. Ah, this thing is working. So he sowed more, and he reaped more, and sowed more, and reaped more. And then the Bible said the man works great. He just blossomed into greatness. And he didn't stop there. He went forward, getting greater and greater. And not only was he going forward, he was going upward. He said he went forward and he grew until he became very great. So great that a whole nation, the Philistines, envied him. That is, break forth. You haven't broken forth until you become an envy to others. You have not broken forth until people begin to ask, <laughs> Are you the only one here? And that's going to happen to you very soon. One bishop challenged me a long time ago, not the recent ones, and said, are you the only one serving God? <laughs> then I knew I'm already breaking forth. When the world begins to criticize you, when the world begins to say, ah, ah, you want to occupy the old land, then you know you are broken forth. Before this time next year, someone here is going to break forth. Let me take just a case study very quickly. And the, our case study will be Father Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, Genesis 12, 1 to 3, the Almighty God promised him, I will make you great, I will bless you, I will make you great, I will make your name great, you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, I will curse those who curse you. Through you shall the whole nations of the world be blessed. 
Well, by the time Abraham passed on, basically, he had one son, Isaac, recognized by God as the child of promise. Of course, he had Ishmael too. Isaac went forward and produced two boys, Esau and Jacob. Genesis 25, verse 28. Genesis 25, verse 28. Then Jacob went forward, had 12 sons, and the 12 sons multiplied, so that by the time they got to Egypt, according to Genesis 46, verse 27, Genesis 46, verse 27, through Jacob alone, the crowd had become 70 souls. From one, Isaac, to two, Esau and Jacob, to Jacob, now we are talking about 70. By the time the children of Israel left Egypt, in Exodus 12, verse 37, Exodus 12, verse 37, through the line of Jacob alone, there were 600,000 men plus children. Now that is called breaking forth. I smiled one day when at Ethro, uh, at the immigration section, I saw a Nigerian coming to Britain with his wives and children. The immigration officer said, you have come with the whole tribe. I smiled. That man was breaking forth. He, was, <laughs> he practically occupied the whole plane. He came with a tribe. There's somebody here listening to me now. Before you die, when you look at your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, it will be a tribe. Now, what is the secret of breaking forth? It's easy. God. Because according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 to 7, 1 Corinthians 3, 6 to 7, the Bible says it is God who gives the increase. You can sow, you can water, but it's God who gives the increase. And so, we see, therefore, that what is going to lead to a break forth is if the father is pleasing to God. If God is pleased with a father and he pronounces a blessing on the father, nothing can stop the break forth. Because the blessing of God flows like a river from the father to the son, to the grandchildren, to the great-grandchildren. He wants the father is blessed. The break forth comes. When you want to call me now, for example, you will say, I'm Pastor Adeboe. But Adeboe is not my own name. It's my father's name. Now, my father was blessed. One of these days, I will be able to explain to you why. He produced me. I'm a Deboe now. My children are also called a Deboe. Their children are called a Deboe. All goes back <laughs> to the same source. Once one man 
is blessed. One way or the other, they will stand out. And from there on, the blessing will be flowing. My father was not a rich man, I've told you before. <laughs> he was so poor, poor people called him poor. But he decided at a time when idol worship was a big thing. We came from a family of Ifa worshippers. I'm sure you've heard of Fajem Merokun. That's, that's my grandfather. But he is decided. My name will be Moses. At the time when it wasn't popular at all to be a Christian. And God blessed him. And so the name Adeboye became the name carrying the blessing. If we gather together all the children of Adeboye, because I'm just one out of ten children, and the others too, oh God. As a matter of fact, of all my father's children, I'm the one who said, uh, uh, well, four children will be enough. <laughs> the others just keep on producing. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, if we gather all those now who bear Adeboye together, we will almost be the same size as this congregation. <laughs> but once the father is cursed, the family begins to die. Once one man is caused. The family will begin to shrink. The opposite of breaking forth is shrinking. Getting smaller and smaller and smaller. For Samuel chapter 2 from verse 27 to 34. For Samuel 2, 27 to 34. God said to Eli, I am the one who said I will bless you. I'm the one who said you will be you and your family will be standing before me forever. He said, but now I change my mind. He said, I will see to it that there will be no old man in your family. They will, they will just keep on dying young, dying young. If they keep dying young, how can they produce? He said, as a matter of fact, I will give you a sign. He said, your two sons will die the same day. You, you don't want God to, bless, to curse you. And so the family of Eli began to shrink, shrink, until there was none left. Whereas, the family of Abraham kept on expanding, expanding, expanding because one man was blessed. So that by, by Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 to 14, Genesis 28, 10 to 14, God said to Jacob, I know you have just taken the blessing of your brother. I know you are running away from him, but I am the God of your father Abraham. Because your father Abraham is blessed, you will inherit the blessing, and your children will be like the dust of the earth. God brought the blessing down to Jacob. So it's not a surprise that within years from the line of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, 600,000 men coming from one source alone, not counting children. If there are 600,000 men, you can imagine how many children there are. So if you are a father, 
I appeal to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ avoid a divine curse because if you attract a curse particularly from God to yourself you can forget your generation That's why when we talk about paying your tithe, it's not a minor thing. You read it, Malachi chapter 3, read it from verse 8 to 11. I've said it before, I've said it again and again. If your physical father causes you, go to your spiritual father, he can cancel the curse. If your pastor, your spiritual father, causes you to run to the general overseer, he can cancel the curse. If the general overseer causes you fast for 40 days and nights and beg his father in heaven, God can cancel the curse. If God causes you, where will you go? Now, so don't joke. Don't do anything that will attract God's cause on you. You must avoid divine cause like a plague. It's not a question of, oh, the, the church wants to take my money. No, 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 no. Don't listen to those who are saying that to you. Don't listen. Uh, somebody showed me something on the internet about one fellow who said he was talking about tithe, that you shouldn't pay tithe. I, I, at first, I didn't want to listen, but God said, wait now, listen to what he has to say. And the fellow continued to talk, and he said, you see, tithe is supposed to be used to buy alcohol so they can drink in church. I said, ah, well, now we know who is talking. Even mad people don't go to church to drink alcohol. No, no, no. No matter how crazy somebody is, the moment you say, this is a church, ask him to come in and drink, he will say, I I'm not that crazy. Because even in his madness, he knows when you say, this is the house of God, the house belongs to God. But this fellow said, Part of the thing you should use your tithe for is drinking alcohol in the church of God. I said, well, anybody who believes this one can believe the devil. So there's no need for me to worry about that fellow. Don't let anybody get you into trouble. You don't want to attract the cause of God. Do I hear you say amen? Amen. Now, you say, but suppose I come from a family that is already cursed. What do I do then? Maybe my father got cursed a long time ago. That's why you must change families. That's why the Bible says in John chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. John 1, 11 and 12. It says, Jesus came to his own, and his own received him not. But unto those who receive him, to them give him power to become sons of God. You change family. You become a child of God. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, that, word, that passage is very deep. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, new, new, brand new. All things are passed away, including all the causes upon your parents, passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When you are born again, unless you now, on your own, invite divine cause on yourself, the cause on the family has no effect on you. I came from a very strong warrior family. 
<laughs> Only God knows how many slaves my grand great grandfather had. And I mean, if you have slaves, you do whatever you like to them. The slave is just like an animal. I mean, I remember a story not of one of our families when a slave was playing with one of the children. And by accident, the child fell. And so the child began to cry. And my grandpa said, what happened? Um, it is a uh, so, so slave that uh, yes, dropped me. Next thing Papa did was get his sword. I was going to cut off the head of the slave. Fortunately, the, baby, the child who was crying said, Ah, what's going on? So he clung to the neck of the slave. If we are going to cut off the neck, you have to cut me off too. That's how the slave was saved. I mean, that's the, <laughs> that, that was the life of a warrior in those days. So, all manners of causes must have been on our family, including one that says that if any woman in our family gave birth to a child, if the child is a boy, that woman must not teach, taste oil or salt for nine days. Otherwise, the boy will die. If it's a girl, no oil, no salt for seven days. Because of something they did to one slave. Only God knows how many years ago. And you may think it's a joke. <laughs> Those of us who came from the family, we knew. You tried. Like the woman said, I can't do without salt for nine days. And secretly takes out the boy we die. That's the power of a curse. Then I became born again. <laughs> and I know Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. I told my wife, eat anything you want. Anytime you want. Eat salt. Eat oil. Not, not one of my children will die. And none of your children will die also. <laughs> what am I saying? Some of you think that being born again is a joking matter. And so you toy with it. Some of you claim that you are born again, you, do, you don't even know the meaning. Because if you are born again, it will show. Every part of your life will change. Your action will change, your words will change, even your thoughts will change. You are a new creature. Being born again means you are changing family. You are coming into the family of God. And once you move to the family of God, any evil that is flowing down in your biological family will bypass you. So I'm going to make an altar call now. Anybody, you know, you are not truly born again. You say you are born again, but you are still living in sin. Come. It's not a joking matter. Come so that you can avoid the curse that is in your family. Come. Let the blood of Jesus Christ wash away your sins. Come. Let him turn you into a brand new creature. Come and join the family of God. So I'm going to count from one to seven. If you want to give your life to Jesus, come before I say seven, and the Lord will save your soul and give you a brand new beginning. I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. Four. 
Can we keep the doors open for those who may want to come in from outside? Five. Six. Okay, those of you who are coming and those of you who are in front, talk to Jesus Christ. Tell him, have mercy on me, save my soul. I want to become a member of the family of God. Please, Lord, give me a brand new beginning. Give me a brand new beginning. Talk to him now. Call on Jesus Christ. Ask him to save your soul. Tell him, I will serve you. Once I become a member of your family, oh God, I will serve you with all my heart. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and pray for them. That the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. That God will give them a brand new beginning. That the blood of Jesus will wash away all their sins. Intercede for them. And anyone who is coming, hurry up. Because I want to pray for salvation now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Yeah. Savior, I want to thank you for your word. And I want to thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their life to you. Father, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, please receive them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Accept them into the family of God. And every curse in their old family, my Father and my God, cancel it today. Write their names in the book of life. And from now on, any time they cry unto you, Father, answer them by fire. Let it be well with them. And let them serve you to the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Those of you in front, congratulations. I want to promise you from now on, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. Congratulations. But I want you to stay where you are so that we can all pray together before the counselors who attend to you. The rest of us, are we ready to pray? Do you want to break forth? And you can't even answer. Uh -huh. Then lift your voice and shout hallelujah to God. Lift your voice to God and say, Father, every curse on me that is hindering my breaking forth, Father, destroy it today. I will do your will. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Any curse whatsoever that is hindering my breaking forth, please, Lord God Almighty, destroy it today. I promise you, I will serve you. 